Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 12 of the Disney Co. In the Know podcast. I am your host, Bruce Beal, owner of 407 and Beyond Vacation Company. And on tonight's show, a man trespasses on Disney property yet again. Disney releases potential measures to reopen the parks and resorts, and we will discuss our favorite deluxe resorts. I am joined tonight by our social media manager, Elizabeth. Hello. And Disney Co. In the Know contributors, Hannah. Hey, y'all. And Lydia. Before- Hello. Perfect. Before we move on with this week's news, Disney Co. in the Know is sponsored by 407 and Beyond Vacation Company, Disney and Universal experts who help plan your family's perfect family vacation. So all you have to do is show up, have fun, and create family memories. Our services are of no cost to you. Visit us on the web at www.407vacations.com. And to stay in the know, visit our blog page at 407vacations.com backslash in the know. Well, guys, it was a busy week of news this week, particularly in the last few days. Um, And let's just get right to it. Elizabeth, what do you have for us this week in the news? Okay, so a few days ago, they announced that Shanghai Disney will be opening um, on May 11th officially, which is super exciting. Um, It just gives us a little bit of hope that the stateside parks will be opening soon. Um, However, it will be very restricted on what they're having. Um, going to be happening in the park. So they will be doing social distancing. They will be opening um, only certain part of different lands within Shanghai. Um, They'll also be doing temperature checks. They'll also be requiring individuals to wear masks. Um, so quite different than, um, the, how the park was, you know, at the end of 2019. Um, but it at least gives us a little bit of hope. I also read some news sources that said that the government had spoke with Disneyland and they wanted to make sure that, um, it was, uh, the capacity was at 30% of what it could operate at. Um, but Disney is shooting for a little below that even. So, um, and they'll also be having individuals domestic um, only coming into the parks at this point. So no international um, individuals. So slow process, um, however expected, of course, with the current situation happening. Um, But like I said, it just kind of gives us some hope. Um, And it's going to be a really good model to see how this um, would translate into Disneyland California and Walt Disney World as well. So um, hopefully um, this will speed up the ball a little bit um, with our parks here in the States and we'll be able to get to Disney soon. Yeah, so uh, what I've heard is that Disneyland Shanghai and how they're going to operate with the the reopening is, is essentially what Disney World and Disneyland are going to model after. So they feel comfortable out in uh, Shanghai that um, they're going to reopen with all the precautionary measures that they're taking to to reopen. And uh, I think we can expect uh, very similar measures here at Disney World and Disneyland when it uh, comes time to open here in the the States. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So some hope though. (laughs) Right. Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, yeah. So actually on a, on a similar topic, uh, let's cu- cut over to uh, Hannah to talk about uh, some further measures that be taken here in the States. Yes. Yeah. So those, those measures you guys talked about, they've been discussing them as well. Disney's medical director, um, Dr. Heimel has released some considerations for reopening. So they've talked about moving in some phases. So starting with Um, maybe the shopping and the dining experiences first and then moving into the parks and doing it very gradually with uh, the limited capacities. So you, um, Elizabeth spoke about, you know, less than 30% and I would expect probably something similar here. They haven't released exact numbers yet. Um, They would also follow the social distancing in the queues and in other group setting areas, um, increasing sanitation, making sure people are following um, the screening and the PPE, so the masks and that kind of stuff, having sanitizing stations around, and then making sure to train their cast in extra safety and precautionary measures to make sure that the cast um, is keeping everyone as safe as possible. There's no date yet on the opening, but I think the fact that Disney has released these measures that they're considering is a good sign that hopefully a date will be coming soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, um, I want to pose the question here to everybody. Um, Does anyone here, would would wearing a mask or, um, you know, being required to wash your hands after an attraction or giving cast members extra time to wipe down attraction vehicles, 
or standing six feet apart in a queue, would that bother anybody here? Um, or you know, like, would that, you know, would you say, okay, I'm not experiencing Disney this way. Um, so I'm going to wait to go or, or would this just be something that I guess you would like live with and, and say, that's not going to stop us from going. Um, I mean, I think it's good that people don't live in fear. And I think this is, you know, a good thing that Disney's doing to be like, Hey guys, you shouldn't be fearful. Like we're taking these precautions. We still want you to you know, experience life and get out there and like, see what we have to offer. And, um, I think it's really good that they're reopening, even though, you know, the virus is still very prevalent. Um, and like reassuring people that everything's going to be okay. So no, I don't think like it would, I mean, it would be definitely different and kind of scary at first, but, um, this might be our new normal for a while. And I think we just kind of need to get used to that. Yeah, Lydia, I think you hit the, the nail on the head. I think this is going to be the new normal for a little bit. And I think we're just going to have to be okay with that. And, and for the folks who are saying, you know, um, I don't want my temperature taken. I don't want to have to wear a mask. Well, going to Disney is not something you have to do. And, and so right. if, you, if you want to experience the parks and you want to experience Disney in this way, Disney is going to open up with these precautionary measures. And if you're just not comfortable with that yet, or you are 65 years or older, um, you know, a demographic that, that the virus uh, tends to hit the hardest most, then it's probably not a good, good idea for you to go, especially during these first few phases where all of these precautionary measures are going to be taking place. And I think that's also the other thing to remember. It is phases. Um, we can't expect them to just reopen um, immediately just with everything that our country, the United States has been on shutdown. And I can't, I don't think we can just expect it to just reopen because I think that would terrify people if they did. So they have to come at it in a phase. And so the first phase probably like Lydia said, seems kind of scary to most people, but um, I think that it's also showing caution. And so I think that that, um, it, and it also kind of gives you some idea like, okay, well, this is phase one. And then obviously we're going to have multiple phases and the park will eventually get back to how the park was, but we're dealing with a pandemic currently. So I think we have to <laughs> accommodate that to like Bruce's point, we're not forced to go to Disney. You know, it's an option that we're choosing to go. So. And I think that it's a choice that like a lot of people are going to want to make because in order for Disney to be able to reach that full level again when it's safe, people have to go when things might still be in, and it may not be the, the Disney that, you know, you're used to and that the, the full experience that you expected when you would have gone before all of this happened, but you want to go and support Disney and still like show your love and experience what you can so that the full experience is available later. And I'm sure they'll yeah. offer, yeah, and I'm sure they'll offer some things to be, like, I'm sure some great masks are going to come out of this. I wonder mm -hmm. if, like, the parks will sell masks. Like, I think there's, they're going to try to make it as magical as possible, even though it's incredibly medical. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have you know, worries that this is going to make this, like, it's not going to be like 2319, you know, it's not going to be like the, the Monsters Inc. crew coming in. So. You know, I don't think we have anything too much. I feel like they could use that, uh, that, you know, the Monsters Inc. crew, though. they could use that really well in the park. with. Some they could just like walk around though. That would be kind of funny to just have those characters walking around. I oh, mean, yeah. I think it would definitely ease people. They yeah. could be the ones who are like making sure everyone's following the precautions mm -hmm. and passing out masks if people don't have masks on yeah I think they can make it really magical you're right <laughs> yeah and, and they already do have the um the Disney masks that are on the Disney shop um yeah, the you can buy and I'm curious if um how that's going to work for cast members and so uh you know it's definitely going to be a phased reopening because so many cast members are furloughed they canceled the fall college program um and so it's definitely going to be phased, but when, when they do open, um, you know, I, I, I can imagine that all of the employees and cast members are going to be wearing masks. Um, and I they did mention that in, um, with opening Shanghai, there will be wearing gloves and masks um, in the park. So do you think I, they'll look like hospital gear or will it be like 
custom made to match their uniforms. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a great, great question. I think they'll custom make them for each character because I think they should want to keep the photo opportunities and stuff like that. Right. You know, people aren't going to want to go get a picture with Belle if Belle has, you know, a mask on and you can't see her face. So I'm, I think it'd be really cool if they make the masks look like the smiles of the character. Oh, that yeah. Up as. yeah. So mm -hmm. like they put Belle's smile on a mask and that's what she wears. So it still feels like the character. Right. Plus yeah. it's intimidating. I feel for children if someone's wearing like a blue paper mask and like blue rubber. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, I can. Yeah. I can I'm sure they know that. And they're aware of that. Yeah, yeah. I I imagine that they're working on that now, and I, and I could see people or, or cast members in uh, different lands at the Magic Kingdom wearing different themed masks or something like mm -hmm. that. So I, I'm sure mm -hmm. they're working on it uh, to make it as um, you know aesthetically okay as possible um, that it matches with the the cast members' uniforms and doesn't scare children. But um, I, I I just I, keep. Oh, go, oh ahead. go ahead, Bruce. No, no I was I'm just, just going to say, <laughs> I just keep thinking back to the 25th anniversary. If y'all remember when the castle, they made it look like a cake. And, you know, it was mm -hmm. like, now we kind of like poke fun at that. And like, oh, those poor people that like, we'll look back maybe in 10 years at, oh, remember that time all the cast members had to wear a mask and like we're posing, you know, with people with masks on. And um, it'll definitely be an interesting time to remember. <laughs> For, oh yeah. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's uh let for time's sake, let's move on over to Lydia who has uh, a a, mu a very interesting article uh or news story <laughs> that she wants to share. So, um yet again, it seems I've yes. as though someone has trespassed on Disney property. So, if you guys haven't seen this yet, I mean, it's it's pretty hilarious, I think. And um so a man uh he's facing trespassing charges. Um, after being found camping on um, Discovery Island, which is located in um, Bay Lake. And I have a little bit of history on the island. Actually, I wouldn't mind like talking about these points real quick because if you know you guys aren't familiar with it, it's actually really cool because it's what drew Walt to the location and helped him solidify, you know, the um, destination for Walt Disney World when he was like flying in his chopper and he saw this island and he was like, oh my gosh, this is it. So, um, it has some interesting history. It went through some name changes in the 70s. It underwent some construction, but it was never like incredibly successful. But it did um, help them create a foundation for Animal Kingdom. So it officially closed down in um, 1996. And then um, Animal Kingdom opened um, 95. No, 98. I apologize. So um, it has, it's been, you know, vacant, I guess you could say, since the late 90s. And there's been some talk about stuff, you know, happening there. They've talked about making it Neverland. They've talked about making it Marvel Island. They've talked about turning it into, like, a really cool hotel or something like that. But, um, you know, nothing's been built since. And so this man, his name is Richard McGuire. And he was found sleeping inside a building on the island, and he classified it as tropical paradise. Um, he is banned forever from the parks, and he's been arrested and charged with trespassing. And there's been some jokes um, coming out of this, of course. Um, some people were, I think, more lighthearted about this than like, oh my gosh, how dare he? Um, people were saying like, oh, he's just practicing self-quarantine. Um, there were a lot of jokes about like, how did he even get out there because of like the waters being infested with like snakes and gators. Even the island itself probably still holds a lot of like unknown, you know, Florida <laughs> natural <laughs> wildlife. So um, people were making jokes about that. Um, one person was even like, oh, I bet, um, you know, he's afraid of the big mice that might come out at night. Um, there was one commenter on, the, the story was posted on um, WDW Info, and there was a commenter, Winter Cat, and he was saying like, oh, I wonder if Disney's patrolling with drones and thermal cameras, and that's how they found him so quickly, because that was the other mm -hmm. thing. People were like, how did they even find this guy? Like, he'd only been there for like two days. And so there, then there were other people like, there's no way that Disney has like that basically military grade 
you know, modern <laughs> like security system. Um, it's probably just people going around on boats and they might have seen something. So that's another uh, interesting question that a lot of readers have been asking. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty funny. Um, you know, it, it, I think it's a, it's actually another crime that haunts the island because in the 80s, um, Disney Company faced federal and state charges because they got in trouble for uh, supposedly um, the deaths of vultures on Discovery Island. So this isn't the first crime that's happened um, <laughs> on the island. And um, crimes, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, I thought it was kind of funny. Um, people are like wondering, you know, if anything's ever going to happen to the island. Um, that's, you know, that was a resurfacer question because it has been vacant for so many years. And honestly, I, my personal opinion is I don't really see anything coming out of it that's, you know, natural. Um, I think people are wanting something that's larger and more grand nowadays. And, um, I think they're going to have to come up with something really innovative if they want to utilize that island and make the transportation more available. Because like right now, at least when it was an island, you could only get there by boat. And um, so I think they could do something like make it a really intimate hotel. Um, they have talked about making it like honey, honeymoon suites for like multiple years. I think they could do something um, specifically for like the Disney Vacation Club. Um, because it is so intimate and so cool and is it does have that like rich history with like Walt loving it and always wanting it to make it into this like supernatural not supernatural super space natural um like island filled with amazing creatures I think they could go back to that if they make it into something that's extremely exclusive for vacation club members so those are my thoughts on it I thought it was interesting how people kept joking about how did he get out there? So um, I'm not sure if you guys have heard or read any other news, but that's kind of what I was seeing when I was <laughs> reading up on I, this. Well, I think to Lydia's point, I think the one thing that it has done, it like caused people to start being like, why aren't we doing something with this land? Like what could Disney be doing with it? And I've seen, mm -hmm. like you said, like I've seen a lot of like hypotheticals being brought up and tossed out. So even though the man was, you know, charged with um, a crime, it's still getting the Disney community chatting about what Disney could be doing with this property. So I think that's one yeah. good thing that came from it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, uh, I, I don't know if they're going to do any, uh, anything with this land anytime soon, given all yeah. the projects that they're doing. Uh, the 50th anniversary coming up, um, the Epcot, you know, renovations that they're doing and uh, the, new, the new hotels that are coming. Um, I think that, you know, if this, if this island gets um, anything done to it, that it's probably going to be a while before that, before that happens. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. but I, I think I, uh, your point about the, the possibility, like how did they find him out there? Yeah. Um, yeah. Is really interesting. And I wonder if it kind of ties back to the, the guy we talked about a few weeks ago who was jumping the fence in California and running around the park mm -hmm. there. And I wonder now if they're like increasing their patrol of all of their parks because they're suspecting more people are going to try that kind of stuff, especially the longer that stay at home orders and stuff go on. Yeah, people yeah. are getting a little stir crazy. We might see more stories like this coming our way. <laughs> and it sounded like this man like didn't even know it was Disney property, which I thought was also oh. kind of interesting. At least yeah. that's what I kind of took from the article. But I mean, Disney World is very vast. So uh, it's very, there's a lot of natural land, so I could maybe see it happen, but there's also like the castles right there, so. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally like my next door to discover. <laughs> I have a really hard time believing that he did not know. I mean, it's it's situated between Fort Wilderness, Wilderness Lodge, yeah. and, and Bay Lake Tower over at the Contemporary. <laughs> and, and, and he said that he, did, he didn't hear the police yelling out to him because uh, he was sleeping or something like that. Yeah. Uh, it's just, I, I, the whole story is absurd. Um, you know, it, he, he's banned from Also, life. like, um, food? But, did he bring, did they, like, find food on him? I was, like, trying to, like, was he, like, scavenging outside? Is that maybe how they found, I don't know. No. Like, I, how they got. I think he, I think he was just camping. I, I think he had probably brought some stuff. How he got it out to the island, I, I have no idea, but, uh, um, but He must yeah. have swam. I mean, yeah, I, I can't believe he got in that water. You have to pay me a lot of money to get into that water. <laughs> 
<laughs> there's no level of money. <laughs> no level. Of money. Was it uh, nighttime? Was it daytime? <laughs> I don't know, but yeah. Like, where do you know. come in swimming at? I don't understand. Like, where would you even start swimming to get probably, there? Probably, probably Fort Wilderness. Be my guess. That's but how do you get to Fort? So, oh, so maybe he like drove because I know, like I've talked about this before. There's a lot of people that live in Orlando that are like wanting to go to Disney so bad they'll drive on to just the property and you know drive past the entrances and drive past. I know, like Contemporary has put out um, like. Um, Disney strong stuff and like that sort of thing. So maybe he just parked his car somewhere and swam over. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think yeah. at this point we're only uh, we're only speculating. He probably but. just walked into the parks is what I'm yeah. just thinking. He probably didn't even have a car. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I, I, you know, um, a weird situation. Another Disney break in. I hope though that. Um, you know, someone who does this um, might not be in their right mind. And if that's the case for this gentleman, I hope, uh, I hope he gets uh, the help that he, he needs. Um, but mm -hmm. we won't be seeing him in a Disney park for a, for a long time. So. Ever. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> so, all right. Let's, uh, that, that's good for the news this week. Let's move on over to our discussion. And this week, we have all chosen one Disney deluxe resort that is our favorite as of right now, um, our favorites are, you know, constantly evolving and changing as things uh, pop up, as renovations are made, new dining options provided at the resorts. And so these are our favorite Disney deluxe resorts as of right now. And so um, let's go ahead and start with uh, Hannah. Hannah, what do you have for us um, in terms of your favorite deluxe resort? Um, I have you know, I've been to Disney, but I've never had the opportunity to stay at a deluxe resort. And the one I think I would want to pick would be the Animal Kingdom Lodge because it overlooks four savannas with over 200 animals that just roam around. So you can look right outside your room window and you're like in, you know, a safari. And each room has a guide so that you can identify, you know, the giraffes, the gazelles, the zebras. I think they said there's over 30 different species that roam, um, birds, different things. I think it just sounds like an incredible experience. And it would be a taste of like living inside of Animal Kingdom. We'll be living at this, staying at this resort. Um, they have three restaurants on site. The, and I'm probably going to butcher these names, so I apologize ahead of time. Um, <laughs> but there's Sauna, which does breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it's a little bit lower on the price range, $15 to $35. And it looks out over the savannah. Then there's Boma, which does only breakfast and dinner. Um, and they have some less expensive meals and then some in the more expensive range of $35 to $60. And they tried to theme it like you're kind of in a hut with a thatched roof. And um, then there's also Jico, which only does dinner and is the higher price range. Um, so some, Hannah, Hannah, yeah. you, you, you nailed it with the restaurants um, with just one minor, one minor correction. Uh, it, it's Sanaa. And, Thank you. Uh, yeah, but, but. Uh, Come on, Hannah. Why don't work. you know your. <laughs> No, it is good. It's good. <laughs> yeah, we've actually stayed there. Bruce and I stayed there during when we did the um, Dopey Challenge a few years ago, and it was an amazing experience. I absolutely love Animal Kingdom. Um, I love the shape um, that the hotel is in because it is a different shape than the other hotels. It's a U shape. Um, which Bruce and I were very fortunate because we were at the top of the U. Um, our parents went with us and they were at the back of the U. Yeah, Lydia was. <laughs> and they were it at was the like, very- I felt like I did the Dopey Challenge getting back yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> I remember walking back to your room to see your animals because that was also really cool. Like you mentioned, Hannah, like I wanted to go see their animals um, from their side of the, the room. And I just kept walking and walking and I got there and I was like, I feel like I just walked across Africa. Like that was a very long trip. So that would be my only like ding of that resort um, because the lobby is phenomenal. And we were there near Christmas time or at Christmas time. And we saw it. Um, we literally went to bed one night and we woke up the next morning and the tree was gone. And um, so it was really cool to see, you know, decorate at Christmas and then decorate it not at Christmas time. So um, I love the experience. I also am very, um, I love trying new food. And so I love the food there. I know others have different opinions about the food options. Um, but if you're into exploring new things, I think it, it's a good resort to go to. 
Hannah, I think I think your your pick for the Deluxe Resort is a home run. Um, I I think this resort is, is beautiful. Uh, the lobby is absolutely terrific. It has a, a a nice fireplace. Has great chairs to sit in. Um, ju just the the thatching on the on the ceiling and the the lobby itself. You could you could spend you know a, an hour or two just walking around, hanging out. And that's not even including the, the zoo type atmosphere in the back. Um, and so I, I really love this resort. Elizabeth says, um, you know, there's possible ding with, with the food. I would say that the, uh, the distance um, from the other parks is, is a little bit of a ding. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it, I, I think the extra time on the bus to get to the parks um, every day, you know, could very well be outweighed by staying at such um, an inclusive and immersive type environment um, to be able to take the kids out in the back and see zoo animals and to be able to um, hang out at the resort. You could even do a resort day and it's just animals mm -hmm. and pool and walking around and playing games. Um, yeah. And they, they have, have playground. Yeah. I was going to say, I was looking into all the things that I was, I was getting lost in this resort today after work. I was just browsing through it and I was like, oh, I wish I was here right now. And um, they have the pool. They have a huge water slide on the pool, which I would be a huge fan of. They have an arcade. They have a playground. There's like a whole campfire area with all kinds of activities. They have like drinking and painting while you look out over the savanna um, and then all the animals. So I feel like it seems like there's also a really wide range of activities for any age and for any interest also. So. Yeah, and I'll, I'll correct what I said. I think Elizabeth was saying the ding might be if you stay in one of their wings um, and not the food. But And so that, yeah, if you're staying out in one of those winged um, rooms, it, it is a far walk. Um, and it's sure. almost worth it to ask for more of a, which I don't think we had a preferred room, but this would be definitely a hotel that I would recommend saying, hey, can I have a preferred room, especially if you have little ones just to stay up closer. Um, and the concierge level I know is also a very nice, um, a very nice level here as well. So that could, if you have that in your budget, um, being able to stay at the concierge level here too. So yeah, you need those Wally chairs to get your back in the back. I know for real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, it is, it, I would say it's probably Disney's most immersive, like full on themed hotel that they have and I also really like it too um obviously I love Disney so much but it's really nice to go back and it's not like in your face Disney um but it's like a high-end quality hotel um that they just put a lot of like detail into and I was also going to mention the gift shop the gift shop I don't know um if you guys remember um how vast it was and how mm -hmm. um I loved that which sometimes the gift shops at hotels can be um, a little more cramped and they just, um, I think the nice thing about this hotel is they have space, like they allow for that and you don't feel like on top of people. Yeah. They also and have they, some really cool, like, um, I would say like African inspired artwork that you can mm -hmm. buy at the gift shop that I think is really cool that like you might not find in other hotels. Like mm -hmm. sometimes it's just Disney merchandise, which is great, but like, it's really cool to kind of learn and see and like, you know, take that culture into your own home. So mm -hmm. Yeah, and they uh, and they have the uh, drums playing at mo most hours of the day, so uh, mm -hmm. you, you definitely get get in the vibe um, as soon as you walk in the doors. So, so Hannah, uh, good choice. Uh, Elizabeth, what about you? Your your favorite deluxe resort right now? Okay, so um, I have to take it back a little bit, but growing up, um, we would stay at Yacht and Beach, main, well, only Yacht, typically, um, growing up as kids, and I have always loved this hotel, and as I've gotten older, um, I appreciate it for different reasons. As a child, the pool, number one, loved it. There's sand on the bottom, they have a lazy um, like pool, and then the water slide, you had to, which as a kid, you think is so cool because you had to kind of like leave the pool area, walk out, you walked up and you go down. It's like a rest um, pirate ship um, that you get a slide down. And I mean, we would spend a full day multiple times um, just at the pool because of how immersive the pool is. Um, the sand bottom, if you like the ocean, it's a very cool experience. Um, the pool is also situated by one of the most sought after restaurants on Disney property, Beaches and Cream. 
which um, they just redid in a beautiful renovation. Um, but that's where you can get your traditional like hamburger, French fries, Lydia loves her milkshakes there. Um, so it's one of those really just fun beachy type themed, um, areas. Um, so as I've gotten older though, I really appreciate, um, where this hotel is situated at. Um, I love Epcot, so it is a great distance to be able to walk over to Epcot, you know, in the evening, maybe after a long day at the pool, grab some dinner over there. Um, if I'm feeling going over, you know, to Galaxy's Edge or checking out Hollywood Tower Tear, I can also walk over to studios um, right there. So location is definitely key. Um, it also is situated right across from the boardwalk. I mean, it's, I mean, as I keep talking, I'm like, it's such a great location <laughs> right across from the boardwalk as well. Um, which, you know, if you want to take a stroll over there and go to the bakery in the morning for breakfast to switch it up a little bit, you can do that. Um, and it just has a really nice, um, overall vibe the entire, um, hotel does. And that's, um, something that I've always loved because as I mentioned, it's yacht and beach and the yacht side of it is more um boat themed um which is really cool and it's like darker wood navies um darker like sea colors whereas the beach side when you walk over you'll immediately notice the transition is lighter blues um lighter um colors more airy feeling um so you know same kind of entity but two different aspects of the of water which is really cool um it also has one of our favorite restaurants there cape may cafe which has an all-you-can-eat crab buffet the first time um bruce and i experienced this i think was during our honeymoon and i'm pretty sure we go back every single time we go to disney because who doesn't love an all-you-can-eat crab buffet um, so they offer that. And then they also have some very nice sit down restaurants like the Yachtsman Steakhouse that Neil Patrick Harris and his partner go to frequently. Um, so it is an overall really great experience from um, fun beachy side all the way up to um, something more sophisticated. So yeah, sorry if I, I no, that was good. It, <laughs> and I just want to add, uh, I really do love this resort. Um, and other than the boardwalk, is there a resort that is, that is better situated between theme parks? I mean, the Contemporary is so close to the Magic Kingdom. You walk over. Um, the Grand Floridian is close to the Magic Kingdom, and they're building that walkway um, currently. But the Yacht and Beach is close to Epcot's World Showcase, and you can walk to Hollywood Studios, or you can catch the Disney Skyliner. Um, there are just so many good things about the Yacht uh, and Beach Club resorts that, um, you know, Elizabeth had mentioned about going to dinner at, at Epcot uh, Moral Showcase and, and being so close. And I don't know if there's a better resort on uh, New Year's Eve to stay than mm -hmm. the Yacht and Beach or the Boardwalk um, because you can celebrate all night in Epcot um, who throws a great party for New Year's Eve. And then all you gotta do is walk right on over to your resort at the end of the night. You don't have to catch a bus. You don't have to wait in line. You don't have to catch a monorail or a boat. Um, and, and so, you know, definitely this one is not only aesthetically with a great pool and great food, but it is location, location, location. Mm -hmm. And I also think it's a really good resort for, you know, couples that don't have kids that are wanting to experience Disney um, and they're wanting, you know, the Disney amenities without feeling like they're constantly at Magic Kingdom. And again, it gives you the option of two really great parks that adults typically enjoy, maybe a little bit more than kids do. Um, and so it, it's kind of like if you're looking for that type of resort, this would probably be a perfect, a perfect one. Yeah. For no. sure. Does anyone have uh, any other comments on the Yacht and Beach before we move on? I feel like now I, I feel like every time someone talks, I'm like, oh, no, I want to go to that one also. <laughs> I'm just going to sign up for a, a whole bunch of trips now. <laughs> you know, when, the, when the team goes on a, uh, on a fam trip and we take agents down there, we, we'll, we'll make sure that uh, you touch them all. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, Lydia, what do you have for us? What, what, about, what about your favorite deluxe resort? So... But mine has actually always been the Polynesian. Um, so the Polynesian is, it's a great location for families. It sits on the monorail loop and it's like directly across um, Bay Lake from the Magic Kingdom. Um, there's a bunch of dining options. There's a lot of recreation. There's like 
four pools, there's movie nights, boat rentals, campfire events, fishing, volleyball, jogging trails. You can go over to the spa and fitness center at the Grand Floridian. It's like literally like a football field away walk, but they have such a wonderful transition of like leaving that Polynesian forest vibe and entering that Victorian, you know, um, turn of the century, white and red um, decor. And then there's a lot of shopping and which is really cool because a lot of the merchandise that they sell at their stores at the Polynesian are like ocean themed. So you can find some really cool Lilo and Stitch, Moana, Little Mermaid merchandise here. Um, but what I actually love about the Polynesian the most is since Florida does have that, you know, subtropical um, environment, it's really easy to actually feel like you're in Hawaii when you're at the Polynesian. The smells are amazing. The atmosphere is amazing. It's just covered in palms and there's, you know, all the, um, you know, hotel rooms kind of look like huts, I guess you could say. Um, it has that dark natural wood to it. And um, yeah, it's just absolutely like aesthetically beautiful is what I love about it. Um, they also have an amazing pool. Um, their main pool out of the four, it has a giant volcano um, and it has a waterfall and a slide. And I have some great memories of, you know, jumping into this pool um, with my family when I was really little. We stayed there once. Um, but yeah, I think it's actually a great hotel for families. Like this is, um, since it is right on that loop, but I always say like, there's so much more to Disney than just the parks. Um, and I don't have children, but I'm really excited for when I do have children to go to the Polynesian because there's just so much to do. And I think people might look at the price and be like, oh no, I can't justify that. But I don't think like you should think that way because there's so much more to do. You know, Disney can really be relaxing if you take the time to discover what the resorts have to offer. And I think the Polynesian's like a perfect example of that. Um, so yeah and then yeah Bruce if you wanted to talk about the vacation club huts that they recently uh, added oh, yeah. I'm not too familiar with those but I know you are <laughs> so yeah the Polynesian <laughs> does have the uh, bungalows out on the water um that you can um rent out with DBC points or um actually just um reserve outright um and they are significantly um more expensive than, than a normal room um but um yeah that so might I, be the time that you have to do some really justification <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's like i'm staying in this and i'm not leaving yeah, <laughs> yeah. ever yeah exactly well i will just see the uh, castle from well the and that's mm -hmm. what that's exactly what i was going to mention is this resort you can see the top of the castle um from inside the the lobby or the backside of the lobby near the pool and it, it's really cool to be able to, to see the top of Cinderella's castle um, as you're at your resort. And it kind of builds that anticipation, like, I'm at the resort now, but that's where I'm going. Um, and yeah. so it's really cool. And the other thing I did want to mention about the Polynesian that, that is so great is um, the dining options. So Captain Cook's is a great quick service restaurant. Um, they it, have the best nachos. Yes, they have, they have unique property. food options. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do. I'm craving mm. those nachos right now. <laughs> Very, they like stick with that, you know, Polynesian cuisine. Mm. So mm. we can get a lot of seafood. I don't, do they have anything Pork. that's like French inspired there? Uh, I, don't, um, I would say like French Polynesian, you mean? Yeah. I don't know if they have anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know. They do have the luau that you can do yeah. as well, mm -hmm. which is very um, mm -hmm. immersive as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah um, and, and and not not only that but they have trader sam's bar which one is one of the more famous bars um on disney property and mm -hmm. they also have ohana which is a family style character dining they have um kona cafe which is one of my favorite places to eat mm -hmm. breakfast and if you if you check out our blog um on 407vacations.com backslash in the know they just disney um polynesian village resort chefs just released the recipe for Tonga toast. Tonga. So now you can bring Tonga toast home to you, which uh, what's better than that? So I mean. um, the, the dining and, and as Lydia had pointed out, the, the overall aesthetic and atmosphere, the smells, um, the sounds, it is just an overall, you know, 
excellent. And you can get a, you know, the the spiked pineapple. Um, oh, yeah. Dole, Dole whip. whips there, which are nice. They have a whole which... stand where you just wait in line for your Dole whip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I also think to Lydia's point when she was saying about the transition, the walkway, like if you want to use the gym over at Polynesian or at Grand Floridian, um, Disney, and I say this so much, but they do such a good 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 job at that transition um so you amazing. walk into even the, the music trans- the music changes yeah the and lights like change colors the like, topography changes you're like oh there were like giant palm trees you know here and now I don't see that um but also you know for the front entrance you I just remember as a child when we stayed there walking in and I literally thought we were in the rainforest yeah. because of how much they bring in the tropical, like Florida's mm-hmm. already tropical, but the Hawaiian vibe to it and walking in as a kid and you get the, uh, the necklace or the lay and then the hula girls are over at the side. I remember, you know, practicing that. And I mean, like, it's so immersive that you don't even feel like you're at Disney it's just like oh I'm in Hawaii now (laughs) especially and they used to have that in the lobby they used to have a large area that featured um tropical plants and it would really make the lobby smell amazing and they have switched that out to more seating and um for guests which I think was smart because it did open up the lobby and make it a little more inviting but the smell isn't as strong which is something Mm -hmm. I do miss about the Polynesian I absolutely loved walking in there being like oh my gosh it smells like hyacinths and palm trees just (laughs) yeah it's amazing yeah it's amazing yeah good Good I really don't have any complaints about it (laughs) I guess maybe the only (laughs) the only thing is uh you know someone who it is since it is right there by the park if you're not like into the magic kingdom it might be you might not enjoy that so just that's something to consider yeah, and I think it's also like to your point of it is doesn't feel stuffy like Grand mm-hmm. Floridian can feel. Grand Floridian can feel at mm-hmm. times, and it's kid friendly. You know, yeah. um, you have the play. But it can also be like very romantic because it's that Hawaiian mm-hmm. vibe. So it's like you mm-hmm. can go lots of different ways with this hotel. It's it's really for any and all ages. Agreed. Yeah, and the last thing that I'll uh, I'll add to the the Polynesian is that it does have different ways uh, of getting around. So you can take a boat to the park or the other uh, resorts on the monorail loop. Um, you can take the monorail. Um, you can take it to the Magic Kingdom, and you can take it to Epcot. And you, there's also buses. So this resort does have um, three modes of transportation, which is really nice if you have a preference one one over the other. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Lydia, very good. Uh, Polynesian. So far, we have good choices. Um, and my my favorite resort, the luxe resort right now at Disney property is Wilderness Lodge. And um, that, that that's for a couple of reasons. One, I like the American North uh, Northeast National Parks vibe that it has and the craftsmanship, um, the craftsman style that the resort has. Um, you walk into a really big lobby. Um, and it's just filled with totem poles. It has um, fireplaces. The, uh, the stream that turns into a waterfall um, mm-hmm. starts from inside the lobby, which is a really cool feature um, that you're in the lobby, the water streaming. And as you walk to the back side of the resort, you know, it goes down a waterfall um, and, and over to the geyser and um, the pool area. So I think that's a really cool um, feature that it has. The other, the other thing is the transportation there. You can take a bus, you can take a boat to the Magic Kingdom. Um, dining is uh, really good. They have a new dining experience, uh, Storybook Dining, which is American mm-hmm. cuisine. Um, it's a character dining experience uh, with seven or Snow, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Um, prices are, are typically between $35 and $60 for an adult. Um, but the the ambiance of that that restaurant the the aesthetic is it it is so unique uh they really stepped up the game there uh with dining at wilderness lodge and in a new new dining uh location that they they recently added was geyser point which is out on the water which is just a quick service american cuisine uh 15 and under per meal but you can you can go get burgers there you can go get sandwiches 
and it's a bar and you can just sit out there um, near the water and uh, you, know, you can watch the geyser go off. Uh, and from one, from one angle, you, you look back and you see the resort and at the other angle, you look at Discovery Island and maybe you're, there is or is not a man on the island. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah, I, I, I think that between the aesthetic and the location, but just the overall vibe that I'm somewhere else, um, and, and to like Lydia's point about the Polynesian, um, I get similar vibes, um, about the Pacific Northwest. Um, and so I, I, I right now it, it's my favorite resort. So, um, I like to call this resort because we've stayed here a few times. Um, this is my version of camping. Um, I feel <laughs> Like, <laughs> I do not camp. <laughs> yeah. And this is like for, like, this is like really camping for me, which I know a few people will make fun of that, but it does give off that, like, a glamping, should I say. Um, like it's, it's like extreme high, glamping. Yeah, it's ex <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> um, I feel very outdoorsy with this one, like Bruce said, um, with the uh, water starting inside. That's such a cool um, aspect on um, the water and then it runs into the pool and um, I also like how they do have like nature trails on the path like you can walk around um, as well on the property there um, to get to give you more of that like camping type feel um, to it. You do but, want to yeah. camp though it's right next door so <laughs> you, sh you could yeah. But <laughs> That's right uh, it, yes and what Lydia is referring to is uh, Fort Wilderness where you can uh, yeah where you can uh, camp, so, or go to Hoop to Do Review. Um, but, yeah. But yeah, I, I think, you know, coming from this conversation, I think we could definitely ha have a show where we just talk about lobbies, um, because mm -hmm. all of the resorts that we mentioned, mm -hmm. the one thing they have in common, great lobbies. Um, great lobbies. You know, the beat, I would say the, the weakest one is the Yacht and Beach Club um, uh, of the four. I know, I know. Uh, but but for, for what they mm -hmm. lack in lobby, they make up in location um, with their own beach and um, near the theme parks. So, but. That yeah. And, you know, with Bruce's The Wilderness and then Hannah's um, and even Pollen, like your guys is your three. The, it, they must have done something because all of a sudden the resort started getting taller, like in the, um, in those. And that just brings the coolness, I think, to it. Like, oh my gosh, like when you walk in and you're like, this is so tall, you know, but then they have like totem poles that are going all the way to the ceiling um, in Wilderness and it's only Disney can do something like that. And I don't, you know, um, people I've heard compare it to like, um, like Great Wolf, Wa Great Wolf Lodge or something like that, if you're familiar it's on a totally different level. So if you are thinking about use, going to this resort, um, I highly recommend it because it's very different. Yeah, Lydia and I just had the same reaction when you said that. We both went. Yeah, yeah. I know. It, but it I was almost people, identical as if it was planned. People on, the <laughs> on the internet, they've said things. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. you're not saying it. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> because, very different. like, I'll be honest, I thought that before I went. I was like, oh, why would mm -hmm. I stay there? Like when I can stay at, you know, somewhere like the Polynesian or the Grand Floridian, like it's just like Great Wolf Lodge. And it's like, then you go inside and you're like, oh my gosh, was I wrong? So, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I do think the only, like, not to always find a ding and everything, but the only one to me would be that it, since it is near Magic Kingdom, I kind of wish they had access to the monorail. I understand that logistically that wouldn't happen, but the only transportation here is a boat or a bus. Um, and to me, um, I don't know, that's like tough to justify that staying there sometimes because yeah, of that. But like, that's fair. I it can't is get a... there in five <laughs> seconds. So why would I stay there? <laughs> yeah. it is. It I have is. to wait on a boat. <laughs> what? Right. Because it is considered a Magic Kingdom area resort. And, yeah. Uh, but you don't have that like direct line of access. Although you, the, the boat is, is pretty efficient. Um, it's quick. You stop at Bay Lake and then you, you head mm -hmm. on over to the Magic Kingdom. So, but it gives yeah. me anxiety that stopped us going over there. I'm like, I need to get to Magic Kingdom <laughs> now. <laughs> All right. Well, very good. Does anyone have uh, anything to add before we wrap up? 
Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to say thank you uh, for being on the show today. I, I really enjoyed our discussion. Um, if you are listening or watching, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel on YouTube, Disney Co. In the Know. Visit us on Facebook at 407 and Beyond Vacation Company and join in on the discussion on our Facebook group, Disney Co. In the Know. And if you want to stay in the know and, and uh, find more news and, and more podcasts, visit us at www.407vacations.com backslash in the know. So guys, until episode 13 next week, um, take care and I will see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.